<laughs> I like how I, oh, I should probably get some water before we start talking. It's already live. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did someone else like the rest of you. I think that ship has sailed. Okay. You are joining us on Facebook. We are about to do the bug off. These are some naturalists from the Great Plains Nature Center. So once Rachel comes back, <laughs> we'll kind of let you guys know uh, what we're doing. But yeah, we're going to compete and see what the best bug is because we're all very opinionated and we want to share our opinions with you. So here we go. Or facts. Just facts, maybe too. Facts. I, I wouldn't say just facts. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, probably going to be a little controversial because we all have very different opinions about what the best bug is and some of them are objectively wrong. So <laughs> this is going to be an interesting, interesting take. <laughs> what? <laughs> no! Am I wrong? Yeah! Are you going to look at me and you're going to tell me that I'm wrong? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, well... I'm actually going to say that again. five times tonight. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to pull up our live stream on a different tab so that I can actually view it and make sure we're answering comments and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I've got it. Um, up too, we're we're going to hang out for a second. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I guess it's seven. So let's go ahead and like get started and... Here's what we've got going on tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and friends beyond the binary. We have six naturalists. We have six different groups of insects represented. You heard us right, insects. And we are going to be competing to see which one is the best by presenting a five minute long-ish PowerPoints that we have created for each other in order to make our case for the best insect. Now we have a few rules. Um, the first one is that we're we're pretty much going to pull the plug if anybody goes beyond six minutes because five minutes is really our optimal time limit for tonight. Um, the other rule is that when somebody is presenting their PowerPoint, all of the other naturalists have to have their mics muted. That means you, Emily. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> we lost Alicia. She's okay, good. Hopefully She's I'm back. back. Um, so uh, welcome back. Okay. So we, we will also, after the presentation is over, we will have a period of time for discussion slash debate over the contents of that person's presentation. And at that point, we will also be able to address any concerns, comments, questions, statements that you, the audience, have for us as well. <laughs> so that's our plan. Um, and how are we deciding who the winning bug is? That's where the audience comes into vote. play. Popular vote. <laughs> yes. So at the end, after everybody has seen all six of the different bug presentations, we want you to vote in the comments and tell us which bug is the best bug. There can be only one. Easy peasy. That's true. Well, mm -hmm. at least a few of us have like a group of bugs. So there might also be like a few thousand, right? Of the best bugs. I don't know. <laughs> Just saying. Well, I see it looks cool. like Emily has a cheerleader in the comments here. Yes. Who is it? Holly. Debbie Graff. Debbie Campbell Graff. That's my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Okay, I guess that she's on your side then. <laughs> okay, well, who who gets to go first? We have. Let's introduce ourselves in case people don't know who we are. I'm Rachel. I'm Team Grasshopper tonight. I am Alan. I'm Team Neuroptera tonight. <laughs> I'm Lizzie, I am Emily. Team, I am Team, team Mantis. Oh, no. <laughs> one at a time, guys. One at a time. <laughs> We're all in different spots. I know. Our internet is real bad. Somebody's internet's real bad. Somebody's. 
I'll claim it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> mine might be kind of bad too. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, who, Nicole, did you continue introducing yourselves? <laughs> I mean, I started to, and then two other people started talking over me, but my name is Nicole and I am Team Beetle. Let's go Team Mantis next. Thank you, Nicole. My name is Lindsay and I'm Team Mantids. <laughs> <laughs> to you, Emily. Okay. Hey, I'm Emily and I'm Team Dreamfly. <laughs> <laughs> that was intense. Hi, I'm Alicia <laughs> and I am Team Wasps. <laughs> that just sounded really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's great. Okay. Um, so who wants to go first? Let's see. Somebody have a dice roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't mind going first. Perfect. You just volunteered. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, everybody but Nicole, finished. mute your microphones. Okay. Everybody see my screen okay? Can I get thumbs ups? Emily, thank you, Alan, because Emily's frozen. She's just going on my screen, so I didn't know what that meant. But <laughs> let me start my timer. So I am Nicole Brown, and I'm Team Beetles, but specifically Team Fireflies, because who doesn't love fireflies? Most of us have probably had some experience with fireflies, and what's really not to love? But they are really, really amazing bugs, not only by their looks, but kind of, you know, even more in depth than that. So just in case you weren't quite sure, uh, fireflies are not made of fire and they are not flies. So their name is not very good at describing what they are. <laughs> they are in fact beetles. So these guys have very special little elytra like all beetles do that are hardened wings that cover their flight wings underneath. And of course fireflies in particular, have these lovely glowing abdomens. And that glow that they produce is very, very unique. It is actually nearly 100% efficient and it produces almost no heat at all versus say something like an incandescent bulb is only about 10% efficient and even LEDs are only 40 to 50% efficient. So their glow is very, very unique. And when we're thinking about the range of these guys, some people do call them fireflies, some people call them lightning bugs, and a lot of that really is down to where you live. And the map on the right here is actually showing where fireflies live. So the dark purpley pink color is where you have a lot of different variety and species. Red is a little bit less than orange, yellow, green, blue. And over in the white on the west coast is actually where there's hardly any fireflies at all, or even none. So so poor people on the West Coast don't get to go out in summer and catch these awesome bugs. I feel really bad for them. And, you know, why do they glow? And there's a couple different reasons for that. One is to attract mates. So most often the female is actually flightless. She will hang out on a leaf or in the grass and just kind of glow and try to act really beautiful and amazing and attract all the males who are also flying around above her. And they might even be doing dance battles in the sky, trying to prove that they are the best choice for her. They also glow to deter predators. So fireflies actually taste really, really, really bad. And that glow is a warning to pos possible predators. And they also glow to attract food. And in particular, this is a really fun, you know, story that you might have heard before, but some female fireflies will glow in such a way to attract males of a different species. Of course, she cannot make babies with a male of a different species, but she can eat him and use that protein to make her own eggs in the future. So awesome. Love them. 
And when we're looking at that glow, it's very unique depending on the species. So different species will actually flash different colors, different flash patterns, and even flash at different times of the night. So some flash really early in the night, some like at midnight, and some not even until later in the evening into, into the wee morning hours. And that's just to make sure that they're only attracting their own species. So some species like the blue ghost firefly actually glows blue and kind of has a little zigzag pattern to its glow. Others like the three underneath here all flash yellow, but flash at different um, speeds and have different kinds of flashing versus non-flashing patterns. The flash bulb firefly has a really, really bright white flash. And the Photinus paralis is one that we actually have here in Kansas that is a yellow glow. And it's a very distinctive J pattern that's really, really easy to find at night. So it's one of the only ones that like I can ID by glow. But if you're really good at fireflies, you might be able to ID all of these if you just pay attention. But one of the coolest things that I like about fireflies is actually their larva. So their larva have these really, really big mandibles, as you see on the picture on the right here, and they are highly venomous. They won't hurt you, but they're really, really good at catching their favorite prey, which is slugs and snails. And they will bite those snails, and the snails are completely defenseless, and the fireflies larva will eat them alive which is kind of brutal. They're really, really cool. The adult fireflies just eat pollen and nectar, so aren't too scary. And these guys have been an inspiration for people of all ages, and whether that's a future naturalist or innovations in LEDs, um, we've learned a lot about light and, you know, how they produce these lights have helped us make more efficient LEDs and brighter LEDs. And it's also inspired TV shows, like the lovely show Firefly and the ship Serenity one of my absolute favorite shows, and hopefully they have inspired your vote as well for the best bug tonight. That's it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm also wearing a I love your bra. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Nicole, that was so wholesome. <laughs> It was. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's Who great. else is feeling like they're in trouble now? <laughs> I'm good. I'm confident yeah. in my skills. Got a volunteer? Wait, 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 wait. For it. Why Discussion? Not? Any any thoughts about Nicole's presentation from the audience or? Our fellow naturalists or do we need more information before we can really start fighting? Ooh. Mm. I will say I do like fireflies but I have a strong argument for my bug. So Ooh. we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I'm excited. Do you want to go next? Is that a volunteer? <laughs> I will, if they were I will point out that um, many of our audience members seem to really appreciate the Firefly reference, which doesn't really seem fair to us, but it gives you points, <laughs> so that's nice. No. <laughs> it's it's not fair at all. Great. It did not inspire <laughs> the show. They inspired. <laughs> okay, this is Serenity. This is the ship from the show. Her butt glows when she's going into hyperdrive. That is a Firefly. This is a Firefly. Oh, there's, there's no denying that the ship is named after. But you can't claim the whole series, the whole T. That show is not. Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. I'm sorry. The ship? Y'all are a bunch of nerds. Serenity. Her name is Serenity. The show is called Firefly. Also, the show you... is called Firefly no, because no. it's named after the ship. The ship is named after the insect, but the show is not, did not come because of the ship. You could also argue that the ship looks more like a snake fly, which is more closely related to my theory. Yes. So. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Well, obviously, I think uh, Team Neuroptera gets to go next then. And I hope you're beginning with yeah. that tie-in. <laughs> I, I support that. All right. Hmm. I will... Everybody, mute your mics. Okay. Everybody mute. <laughs> All right, so as we said, I am Alan and I am doing Team Neuroptera. Okay, so 
for those of us who don't know, um, let's see here. Oops. Okay. What is a neuropteran? Okay, so these are the nerved wing uh, uh, order of insects. Um, they get that name from their the very delicate cross vein patterns that they have on their uh, on both pairs of their wings. Um, they can look uh, really quite beautiful. Some of them even have iridescent coloration uh, in those wings. Um, what you're uh, probably most familiar with would be uh, the family uh, of lace wings, which makes up about a, a fourth to a third of this whole order. So uh, what you see in the picture there is a green lace wing. They're a pretty common insect to see, especially in the summertime. Uh, you're going to see them um, hanging around uh, uh, your lights outside at night because um, they are nocturnal. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty common, and there are about 6,000 species of neuropterans in the world. So that makes them really actually one of the smallest orders of insect. Uh, clearly, they they favor quality over quantity, uh, unlike beetles. So um, you don't really need all that many of them. All right. So why are they so clearly the best? There are three reasons why I think neuropterans beat out the competition here. Number one is biological control. So neuropterans uh, are excellent predators, okay? Uh, if you're a gardener or if you're a farmer, you're probably familiar with lots of pests like aphids and mealybugs and moths and caterpillars that are going to damage crops, damage plants. Uh, they cost the agricultural industry billions of dollars a year, uh, insect pests, but uh, lace wings are excellent predators of all those soft bodied um, uh, uh, invaders that we have in our in our agricultural ecosystem. Um, you can see in that bottom picture that's a green lace wing larva and it's grabbed onto an aphid um, and draining it of its uh, of its juices. Um, they're really, really good at what they do. You can actually commercially buy uh, um, lace wing eggs and lace wing larva to put in your gardens and uh, yeah very good at what they do um, and also once they fully grow uh, green lace wings like that one on the left they become pollinators as adults they feed on pollen um, but other kinds of neuropterans like that uh, owl fly you see on the right uh, will actually remain predators as adults as well so they feed on all sorts of other flying pests um, you can see their wings are a little bit reminiscent of dragonflies uh, they're they're very fast flyers and really good at catching um, bugs in midair um, they also sit on twigs uh, with their butts in the air uh, to kind of uh, for camouflage. So that's something. All right. Reason number two would be wasp mantid flies. So I hear you thinking, well, yeah, neuropterans are really cool. Okay, obviously, but I'm also a big fan of praying mantises, and I'm even the kind of weirdo who likes wasps. So what do you do? I have great news for you, okay? You can actually combine all three of these into a wasp mantid fly. Uh, it is a member of order Neuroptera, and as you can see, it takes the best of all three worlds and combines them. Um, they are also an excellent predator, uh, excellent aerial predator, and they even parasitize spiders with their, uh, with their young. So if you're a kind of person who's a bit of an arachnophobe, um, that works for you. All right, and my final reason is, um, oh wait, thought I had something here. Those just look like weird holes in the ground. I don't, uh, that's just another hole in the ground. I don't, I don't get it, what's, what's going on here? Oh wait, wait, what's happening to that ant? Oh my God, ah! Did you see that? Something just jumped out of the sand and killed that ant. Oh, that's horrifying. What on earth would do that? That's so weird. Oh no, and now it's like throwing that ant's lifeless corpse out of that hole? Man, that is pretty brutal. Oh wait, I just remembered my third reason. My third reason was, <laughs> my third reason was that Neuroptera larvae are hardcore. Okay, so what was in that tiny funnel-shaped burrow was actually an antlion. Uh, antlions are, a, uh, are, are a uh, 
but they're called uh, antlions when they're larvae and they're adults as well, although they don't look anything like that when they grow up. Um, but what they do is they sit at the bottom of these funnel shaped holes and they wait for other insects to try and slip down the sides of them, at which point they jump out of the dirt and grab them with those massive mandibles that you see. Really puts those uh, weak little beetle jaws to shame. Um, they are uh, really, really impressive. And they also will even throw sand on insects that, that are in the funnel to try and get it to slip down so it can't escape the death trap. Um, all, all Neuroptera larvae have these gigantic mandibles. That's an owl fly uh, larva you see on the right there. And those mandibles do a lot. They're not just for grabbing prey. They also excrete a paralytic, so it stops the prey from moving. And they also uh, double as a as kind of a sucking mouth part, so they're able to drain uh, with those giant pincers, drain their prey, um, and then get rid of them in most cases. It's not everything burrows down like an antlion. Um, you notice that a lot of these Neuroptera larvae also have these hair-like projections on their body uh, because some of them will actually hold on to the prey they've killed and make a literal ball of dead insects on their back uh, as a form of camouflage, which is the most metal thing that I've ever heard in my life. So um, yeah, obviously Neuroptera is the best and I hope you will consider them. Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, Alan just win. <laughs> no, hey, not with that attitude. Do not let him win. Can I get a that can dude? I get a, if I was in the audience, he like, stole all of ours to make Frankenstein's monster to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was, was pretty low. Also, I loved loved well. all of the like low blows at beetles like those weak jaws get out of here with those weak firefly jaws man that was awesome. <laughs> are you josh in there right now? can i get a mandible you see that baby armor tank firefly larva they also eat <laughs> aphids and snails and other pests of gardens so mm -hmm. every point that you had for neuropta neuroptera also goes for fireflies just saying mm -hmm. You I definitely think that's have true. Pests. I mean, that's what they do. They are pest control. <laughs> do they wear the bodies of their dead? I mean, come on. <laughs> that is pretty metal. It's like if if you were like a um a Spartan warrior and you had like giant pauldrons with spikes with like the heads of your enemies on it. Yeah, exactly. that'd be so cool. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, no, come that could be like a, a really cool downloadable skin, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. On, honestly, because of how hardcore and amazing and anti-pest that insect was, I kind of feel like my very not hardcore pest insect should go next. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. You, you have a good point, yeah. Oh, wait. Do we have anything from the comments about um, our raptor and friends? Good question. Nicole's been replying to people. Thanks, Nicole. Um, I mean, oh, Jim said that one of the neuropter things made an appearance in one of the early Star Wars movies. Does anybody know what that reference is? What? Oh, it's maybe oh, was there like an antlion? The pit, reference? Monster. pit monster. Yeah, which that which, was like yeah. a weird like starfish mouth. Yeah, but it ate Boba Fett. Yeah, what, so another point for yes, Kira. but it, <laughs> no, we like Boba Fett in this house. Yeah, but that's how good they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> aliens are a fair point. Uh, um, your wife says go Neuroptera, <laughs> but she's okay. biased so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her vote doesn't count. Yeah. Oh, the uh, the Wrath of Khan. <laughs> That's a uh, Star Trek, Jim. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, right. the, just the Sarlacc. Really? Cassie knows her Star Wars references. <laughs> okay, who's prepared mm. to learn all about our humble friend, the Grasshopper? Really, really quick. Okay. okay. I just, I just want to point out that just so people are aware, we are not ignoring your comments on Facebook. Um, they just come in a little bit late for us. So just so you're aware. 
Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, quite a delay. Okay, mute your mics, you scoundrels. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, this is gonna be uh, pretty fun. I better set a timer for myself so I know how much time I have. Oh, um, Nancy Anderson wants to know before, um, actually let's get back on to not being muted, Alan. Um, Nancy Anderson wants to know where is the alfly larva found? Is it is it in the ground? Does it live underground like the antlion does? No, I think the antlions are like a separate family. So um, I think it uh, most of the other neuroptera larvae are not ground dwelling, or they don't build those traps anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tell Maverick hello from me. He's real cute. He is demanding attention. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to give oh. it to him. Yeah. Okay. I do. Um, we're gonna share computer sound. Hopefully, y'all can hear this. But we are gonna learn all about grasshoppers and why you should love them. So, number one, um, I'm gonna set my timer. Number one, grasshoppers are pretty amazing. Like that's beyond uh, something that we need to discuss. They're beautiful. The obscure bird grasshopper is one of my favorites. There's just some gorgeous colors. Um, but unfortunately, some people don't like grasshoppers. And so I want to ask the question before we even start, um, what has a grasshopper ever done to you? And there are typically three answers to this question. Number one, grasshoppers bite, which, okay, they can, but Tim Pierce from the Carnegie Museum of Natural History can also bite. And we don't hate him, so let's not hate grasshoppers. Number two, they startle me. Oh, when they jump, it's really startling and it's kind of scary. Well, you know what else startles me? 80s hair, but I learned to live with it. You can learn to live with grasshoppers. Number three, they eat your crops. Which, like, okay, lots of things eat crops, though. Like deer? Like, do you hate deer? No. So why do we have to hate grasshoppers? Um, are there... Grasshopper hazard maps that predict the hazards of grasshoppers every single year, yes, but lots of things are hazards. So there's literally nothing wrong with grasshoppers. And now that we've established that, we can move on and discuss all the things that are right with grasshoppers. So there are three things that are right with grasshoppers. They are grazers. They just mow down grass. It's amazing. Number two, they are protein. They're a really important food source. And number three, they love music. It's so pure, so wholesome, so good. So basically what I'm saying is that when corporate asks you to find the difference between those two pictures, the correct answer is that there is no difference. They are the same picture. Grasshoppers are cows, and that's why we should love them. So number one, grasshoppers graze, and that's pretty amazing. Um, as Sarah Zukoff, the entomology extension specialist at K-State says, keep an eye out for these gluttons, because they can eat half their body weight in vegetation daily, which is just so amazing. And grasshoppers really love to eat grass. That's like their thing, which means, you know, sometimes some of our crops are based, uh, are in the grass family and are pretty amazing to eat as a grasshopper. But it's also true that grasshoppers can also be poly phages, which means they like to eat lots of things like sunflowers and wild alfalfa and all kinds of amazing native plants. So being polyphages means they eat tons of different stuff. Now what the problem is, is when those things are gone and when they disappear and there's nothing left for the grasshopper to eat, look how sad he is. That's sometimes when they tend to jump into our crops and eat them. So it's not their fault. Um, now, is there competition on the rangeland? Sort of, yes, there's the other big grazers are prairie dogs and cattle. Interestingly though, um, the grasshoppers don't affect them, they affect the grasshoppers. So prairie dog, Foraging affects the grasshopper comp composition differently from how cattle affect grasshopper composition, but they all just kind of work together and just live in harmony out in the plains and it's pretty great. All right, number two, grasshoppers are protein. They're basically cows, right? We've established that. Um, now, I do mean for wild animals because they are so numerous and so important to, that they form a staple part of the diet of many of our summer animals here in Kansas. Things like Swainson's hawks eat tons of grasshoppers, savanna sparrows, kestrels, mammals, um, like opossums and foxes. There's just so many things that eat grasshoppers. So they're a really important staple food source for wildlife. 
they can also be food for people if you're not a coward. Um, here's some beautiful grasshopper kebabs. Um, grasshopper protein is a really important part of the diets in many cultures that aren't afraid to eat insect protein like Americans sometimes are. Has anybody here eaten grasshopper before? I have. It was very seasoned, so it just kind of tasted like a potato chip to me, but it was very good. Eat grasshopper protein. It is the way of the future. Number three, grasshoppers are musical. They love music. Now, everybody knows that cows love music. All you have to do is sit in a field and play a trombone, and you will summon all the cows to you. That's, it's just that simple. Now, I would not recommend playing a trombone or singing a Swedish yodel or the frozen into the unknown song in order to attract grasshoppers, because here's the problem with grasshoppers. They can't hear notes. It's so sad. Um, they do have ears, though. See that little, like, ear-looking thing right between its legs? Yeah, that's their tympanum. And because of the way their tympanum works, they can't hear the pitch of notes, but they can hear rhythm. Grasshoppers are percussionists, and that makes them pretty awesome. So when grasshoppers are making their sounds like this, they are stridulating. I wrote that down so I wouldn't forget the word. They rub little mechanical uh, ridges on their arms together, just their wings or their body, and they make these percussion sounds, which means actually grasshoppers can hear rhythms. And because they're not listening for pitches and frequencies of sounds, when they're out there singing for each other or making music for each other, they're just listening for the rhythm. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, finally, <clears throat> in conclusion, if you like girls who are brown eyed, thick, kind of toxic, Clumsy, into sunflowers, jumpy, completely bald, polyphagic, uh, avid sun and fun-looking uh, Girls like this, uh, my uh, And that's okay, uh, because grasshoppers are pretty cool. Um, and that is my plea for you, that you should enjoy the humble, original cowboy, the grasshopper, over every other insect that exists. Um, thank you for your time. Wow. <laughs> that was beautiful. Okay. That was beautiful. I can tell you were definitely tugging on people's sympathies. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Grasshoppers, if you try to look up information on grasshoppers, almost all of the results are, how do I get rid of grasshoppers? Why do grasshoppers suck so much? Because they eat everything that matters to me personally as a human who lives in an agricultural state. So we have a lot working against us that we have to combat head on. That's true. I would just like to note that uh, Anna in the comments says "yee hop." Uh, <laughs> <point to that. laughs> Thank awesome. you. That is Thank way you. too good. <laughs> um, I, that's all I, I have, have to say. I, I have heard that like there's there's a lot of research going on like in Kansas and other places about using grazing insects as an ecological replacement for stuff like you know bison yeah. and prairie dogs that get taken out so um yeah there's yeah. some value. so yeah absolutely and uh most most of the research that's being done in in the agricultural sector is about like preventing damage because they're eating things you don't want but uh, assuming that they have access to their native habitats and the foods that they would normally be eating you know the interactions that they have in their own ecosystem are are pretty awesome there were some really cool studies i was starting to read before i realized i really didn't have the time to go in depth into anything um, about like the short grass prairie ecosystems and some of those like more arid climates and how grasshopper communities are shaping those ecosystems and that's pretty cool but yeah you just gotta get over your your negative feelings first so that then you can get in and appreciate <laughs> the cool ecological roles that they have yeah they're important they're important that's all terrible. bugs are important i mean that's true but grasshoppers Some... are more important than neuropterans Get out of here. <laughs> Shots fired. Okay, are there entire groups of animals that subsist almost exclusively on neuropterans during certain times of the year? I don't know that that's the case, so I'm going to say no. Yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> my insect does more than just get eaten, so.
<laughs> oh, okay, it's on. <laughs> that was good. Being was eaten good. is a really if you if there were no grasshoppers, you would notice. Do you think you would notice if there weren't fireflies? Like you wish you just wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah you would notice. Of course you would notice. I would if, miss if them fire... during the summer. I would. Most people wouldn't notice. Like who? I guess the people on the West Coast that don't have have them. <laughs> All right, who's next? <laughs> Emily. I gotta go check our Facebook. Hey. Yes. Check oh, those. somebody had a question. Then, um, are locusts the same as grasshoppers? Um, mm -hmm. And yes, they, they are. Locusts are a type of grasshopper. I was a little unclear about the designation between them, whether they all belong to a certain subgroup of grasshoppers or whether it's a certain behavior. Like I think they're flocking behaviors. Flocking, I don't know if that's the correct word for that. Um, the swarming, swarming behaviors, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that those tendencies are, are what makes them considered a locust, but they are all grasshoppers. We don't have any locusts here in Kansas. Most locusts live in Africa and other countries. Huh. I don't know if there's any in the Middle East, so I'm just kind of generalizing. Like, I don't know exactly where they live besides definitely read some studies about grasshoppers in Africa and I was really excited about it and then I was like no it's not the Great Plains <laughs> we used to we used to have locusts here yeah. really yeah it's there's um there's one species I know that went extinct the if anybody's ones? read um yeah like the Laura Ingalls Wilder books if anybody mm -hmm. reads those then she mentions those at one point interesting I think mm -hmm. it's called the Rocky Mountain locust mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the species? Yeah. Okay. That is kind of um, cool. Yeah. During, during the Dust Bowl, not only did we have wind taking away all of our dirt, but we also had locusts just destroying all of our crops. So. <laughs> <laughs> Grasshopper's gone bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got a dark streak, but that doesn't mean we can't love them. I mean, if people can love Kylo Ren, they can love grasshoppers. <laughs> Oh gosh. Am I wrong? No, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's All next? Right. I, I, I think it's time for me to crush you guys. So here we go. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Go ahead and mute yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can everybody see that? Can I get a thumbs up? Yay, thank you. Okay, starting my timer. Okay, look in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it is not. It's a dragonfly. They are tiny dragons, but without the fire. So scary and ferocious, but a little bit less ferocious since there's no fire that they can burn you alive with, which is great. These guys are amazing creatures. They are well-adapted killing machines and predators that just happen to be beautiful also, which is really awesome. And uh, just any time that you look at any stage of life that you look at, these guys are just kind of killing it. All right. So let's get started about what makes these guys so awesome. If my computer cooperates. There we go. Awesome. So they are the best prehistorically. So before we were even here, even before dinosaurs were here, these guys were already awesome 300 million years ago. And it is actually a dragonfly. An ancient dragonfly is the biggest insect that ever lived. It had a two foot wingspan and they are found in Oklahoma and Arkansas, which is pretty dang cool. I mean, not Arkansas, Kansas. I'm from Arkansas, sorry. Oklahoma and Kansas, they were found in. So they were like the size of a crow. Can you imagine that? Yeah, it's kind of creepy, but that's okay. They're still the best. Now, not only are they the best prehistorically, they are also the best as babies. Yeah, also as babies, they were vicious predators. Do you see that weird little thing coming from its head, that's its lower lip, which is adapted to catch its prey. Some of them even have pinchers like this guy to help them stab their prey, kind of like you can see 
in this little gif. And guess what he is catching most of the time? He's catching mosquito larva. You're welcome. He is actively looking to get mosquitoes. So that's absolutely amazing. And it's like this hydraulic pressure that is pushing up. And you know where a lot of that hydraulic pressure comes from? It comes from their bottoms. They breathe with their butts. So they might not breathe fire like a dragon, but they breathe air through their butts, which is also pretty cool and weird. So they can blow bubbles out of their bottoms and jet propulse themselves all through the water to help them catch even more mosquito larvae. Again, you're welcome. Now, we've established they're prehistorically the best. They are also the best as babies, but of course, they're the best as adults as well. Look how beautiful they are. Look how majestic they are. They come in all sorts of colors. Dragonflies are in every shade of the rainbow, which is absolutely amazing. And while they're in the sky flying around looking beautiful, they are also killing more mosquitoes. That's right. They kill mosquitoes when they're babies and they kill mosquitoes when they're adults. So that's pretty awesome. They found out that they have a 95% kill rate. Yeah, they did a study and they have the highest kill rate in the world of any animal. So you're welcome. They're really good at catching mosquitoes. But how do they do that? How do they catch 30 to 100 mosquitoes in a day? Well, they are awesome at flying. Those four wings that they have, they can control each one of them individually. Each one of them, they can move individually, which is amazing. So they can hover in the air. They can fly straight up and down, side to side, even backwards. They can fly backwards. Like who does that? they do, which is really, really awesome. A neuroscientist from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute even found out they can predict where their prey is going, which is part of the reason why they're so good at killing mosquitoes. And they can go some species from zero to 35 miles per hour in half a second. So they are absolutely awesome killing machines that have now become the inspiration for tiny little robot drones as well. So in conclusion, dragonflies are the best bug like this one chomping on a bee or a wasp. I don't know. It's another bug because they're awesome. They're the best because prehistorically they're the best bug. They're the best bug when they're babies. They're the best bug when they're adults. And they're the best bug forever and always because they're dragons without the fire. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank for very that. nice. Very nice. That's a good competition, I think. I feel very strongly about it. <laughs> yeah, these, these are good, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think we all kind of stand dragonflies. So I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say about that, except like, yeah, <laughs> anti-mosquito club. Like, <laughs> yeah, anti-mosquitoes. I can't even bad talk them. Like, they're cool. I did think it was really cool. How That's they not like, what? They're oh, obviously, I... yeah. Oh, go ahead, Alicia. Sorry. No, I was just going to talk some smack. I just... <laughs> Please. Yeah, I was gonna say that's not very like sportsmanlike of me to be like, well, I think she doesn't deserve to have any, you know, smack talk. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody loves them and they're great pest control, yes, but I mean, wasps are even better pest control. But mm. dragonflies yeah. don't sting people. <laughs> hey, no! only, like, <laughs> only if you mess with them and it's only half, the males don't sting. But no dragonflies sting. They do bite though. Dragon they yes. have significant But so dogs. can dogs. <laughs> and Tim Pierce. <laughs> and Tim Pierce. Yeah, and Tim Pierce. <laughs> I really like that actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to catch up on the comments. We have a lot it's of like, like when um, second graders ask us if a snake can bite, like what's you guys' canned response? Yes, any they have can tea. Bite. Yeah. <laughs> I, like I always say it feels like a paper cut. <laughs> That's terrible. Mm. Snake bites aren't as bad as a paper cut. 
Depends on the snake. That's, yeah, yeah that's depends true. Depends on the snake. <laughs> Everything can bite. All right. All right, we're down to, we have two left. That's it. Yeah. Right. When did that happen? <laughs> Anna says, Tim Pierce, wholesome king of snails, would never bite us. And it's true. <laughs> If you, if you, like, tried to catch Tim Pierce hopping through a field and, like, squeezed him together in your little hands, like, he might feel threatened enough to bite you, but that's just hypothetical. I think he'd just, like, giggle and, like, tell you a snail. Like, <laughs> you, you're probably right. <laughs> I feel like a snail. <laughs> a snail getting chomped on by some, uh, firefly larva. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hmm. Okay. See, two, two people have compared dragonflies to xenomorphs from aliens, though. Yeah. So. Yes! They are. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if you really want to get attacked by something that's like an alien from, yeah. Oof. Not good. <laughs> Who's next? Alicia? I can maybe? go next. Yeah. All right. I'll go. All right, well, let's see if I can share my screen first. And not all wasps are mean, says Amanda Moore, which is very true. That, that is great. true. Yes, that's that true. is very true. All Jake right, you guys. Jason wants to point out that the big dragonflies can bite you for sure. Mm hmm Just wanted to say it. Since, since Jim Mason has spoken, that's all. Okay, bye. <laughs> all right, guys, mute yourselves. Sound off. All right, the timer has started and I will begin my presentation by saying wasps are everything. They can do everything, pretty much. I mean, all the bugs are cool, but wasps are definitely the best. So they are pest control. This, this, is, this is easy to tell. I mean, but we're talking big pest control. So this is like a lion taking out something even bigger than it's, I mean, it's taking out huge prey. Our wasps are, not, are the same thing. They're taking out large prey like the cicada. They are population control, most especially. So they, they will do caterpillars if they're eating your tomatoes. They will do crickets that will not stop singing. They will do cicadas that also will not stop singing. Are you worried about noise complaints and noise pollution? This is your answer. They also take care of spiders. So everyone that's worried about those big spiders, yikes, yeah. They'll, they'll take care of those too. So they make sure that, you know, everything stays in balance. But while they're doing that, they're also pollinators. So I know honeybees and solitary bees and all these wonderful bees that are in the same, you know, the same order, they get a lot of credit, but our wasps are wonderful pollinators because you wanna know what the adult wasps eat? They're catching all that food for their babies. They're being wonderful parents. So what they're doing is they're drinking and eating nectar and other sugary things because they have a sweet tooth. So they like to eat ape and honeydew. Uh, they also like all of these flower nectars. So they're pollinating all these beautiful things in your garden while they're making sure that their flowers don't get eaten by anything else. Now, those babies that they're feeding, it's actually, Alicia, you cut out a little bit, so if you can hear us. She left on a cliffhanger too there. Mm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when she pops back in, we'll uh, get her restarted on this slide. <clears throat> um, I don't know if Alicia can hear us, but Anna says, how did you make wasps look so cute? Look at them on them little flowers. Holly Sanders says, very sweet wasp pictures. And Richard Wilson says, but murder hornets. Yeah, this is some wasp <laughs> propaganda, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> like I, nothing else was I don't wasp. Have, like root for wasps, but like murder hornets are not a big deal right now, at least not in the US. 
Um, they've only been found in Washington State. We do talk about it a little bit more in depth on the That's My Favorite episode that should come out tomorrow called Danger Bugs, me and Licia. So look for that. <laughs> I very briefly touched on them in my presentation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> People are giving uh, lots of laugh and heart emojis. So yes. thanks, guys. <laughs> Where is Alicia? Oh, no. I don't know. Mm. These are some pretty cute wasps. Like, can we take a moment to appreciate how amazing these wasps are? They're very good. Yes, we can. Oh, I like the reddish one that has like a cute little a uh, pineapple looking guy on its face that's yellow the middle one yeah, Those yeah. Look like a dragonflies are cuter Ooh. have you ever seen a dragonfly up close though their mouths are crazy yeah. they're pretty that's weird that's not true. very cute up close they're kind of terrifying just look at their wings and their beautiful bottoms you can't just pick and choose which parts <laughs> to look at that's cheating <laughs> whatever <laughs> it serves a purpose it does it does it does those big old eyeballs can see like 360 yes i'm gonna call alicia thanks nicole <laughs> oh oh um cassie wanted to know that we praised our uh podcast ad break well, Nicole is going to call Alicia and see what's going on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> maybe in the meantime, um, we could try to get Lindsay to do her presentation. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And Nicole's going to call. Yeah, good. She's muted. So we'll, we'll take a little break. We're going to leave that one on a cliffhanger and we'll get Alicia back on as soon as we can. <laughs> And in the meantime, um, good good luck to us because Team Mantids gets to go, and uh, I cannot wait for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you might have noticed by now that all these other predator insects don't eat any praying mantises. Oh, <laughs> that's fair. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen. Y'all meet y'all meet yourselves. Can I, before, before you go though, can I just say, like there's everybody else is making the argument that the coolest insects are these like backstabbing murdery predator no. bugs. No, you That's cannot what say that. Saying <laughs> when you could love the humble grasshopper that has literally done nothing wrong. Yeah. Except I for destroy everybody's fire. crops. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Though, in the life of a grasshopper. They're only destroying crops because it's convenient and their habitat's being destroyed. Wouldn't you destroy crops too? I wouldn't do something <laughs> bad just because it's convenient. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And fireflies are just pretty sometimes. I talked about that. They're pretty yeah. and murderous. So best of both worlds. Nicole, did you get a hold of Alicia then? Um, I did not. She did mention on Discord um, that she's trying to get back on. Um, okay. Oh yeah, she needs letting. Um, yeah, she needs Anna, Anna pointed out um, that if we are sharing her presentation for her, that might help with her bandwidth because her internet's not as clear back out there. So, oh, she's trying to get back in. Okay, cool. Um, so we can maybe do that. I'll, I'll talk to her on the side and see if we can work that out. Okay, I'm going to do mine then. All right, are we ready? Everybody mute yourselves. Go, 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 go. Sharing of the screen. All right, got it. Shares. All right, are you ready? Um, I gotta start a timer real quick. That's not too loud. Or if it's loud enough. Forgive me. 
Now this is a story all about how the mantids are the best bug in town. And I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, and I'll tell you how the mantids are the greatest everywhere. In a small brown egg sack, born and raised, on plants are where they spend most of their days. Filling out max and relaxing all cool, waiting on some bugs on which they can chew. When a couple of pests, they were up to no good, started making trouble in the neighborhood. They snatched up the bug and the neighbors were glad. I'll tell you, they're the best predator bugs that we've ever had. Okay, that's enough of that. Um, <laughs> forgive me. Um, so I thought we would start with the fact that mantises are ambush predators and they have really superb vision. Um, whoops, I messed up already. Okay, so they don't just have two eyes, they actually have five eyes. Um, they have two compound eyes, which are those really big ones on the sides. And um, then they have three simple eyes that are in between them. They're those weird little jelly spots that are in between their antenna. And those simple eyes are used to detect and focus light. And these eyes help determine the sun's orientation, which means that the eyes help them navigate and determine what time of day it actually is. And those compound eyes, those really big ones that you usually see, um, are made up of over 10,000 lenses a piece, which makes those compound eyes perfect for detecting movement, gauging distance, and keeping a really sharp eye on their prey. Now, humans can see in 3D, and a study that was done in 2018 also showed that praying mantises can see in 3D, which is pretty cool in the insect world. Not to mention that their heads are basically on swivels and they can turn their heads 180 degrees from the center. Humans can only turn their heads about 90 degrees, which basically makes um, praying mantises superior, obviously. Now combine all of that together and you have a top predator who can jump with acute precision. So check out this quick video of this little dude leaping into the air and just nailing his target. <laughs> Boom, 10 out of 10, that guy just made the Olympic team precision. Okay, so now that we've talked about their eyes, did you know that praying mantises have one ear? They don't have two like humans do, they have one singular ear. And that's because like a lot of other critters out there, they also have predators. And the specific predator I'm gonna hit on today are bats. But the good news is that these praying mantises are not an easy target. With that ear, they can detect the bat's echolocation sounds. And to avoid these nocturnal predators, mantises literally turn into aerial combat experts and, ex and they like execute these fighter pilot maneuvers. I mean, like literally they, um, when they're approached by a bat, they dive to the ground like Tom Cruise and Top Gun. And they often execute spirals and loops on their way down to shake that bat off. But if they get caught, they try to slash their way to freedom by using their big spiky front legs. I've never actually seen this, but I like to imagine that it's like an action packed comic book. And it's very exciting with lots of pals and noise effects. Um, so they can evade predators but they're also masters of camouflage. Now, orchid mantids aren't native to Kansas. This picture of an orchid mantid, if you can even see it, I don't know, it's really well camouflaged. Um, it's just there to show how powerful their camouflage really is. Now, there are, I think, two mantid species that are actually found in Kansas, one of which is the Chinese mantis. It's not native, but it can be over four inches long. I mean, they're those really big ones that you find. The native one that we have, um, the Carolina mantis, can be all green, brown, or gray and uses that coloration to hide um, among the plants in your vegetable garden and snatch up unwanted pests like those cabbage moth butterflies and aphids and other insects that might do harm to your plants. Last year, I found a mantis on my tomato plant and I was so excited that I named her Tommy and then I didn't see her for a while and I was sad. But anyway, um, the fact that you even have pres praying mantises like in your yard is a sign of a healthy environment. Now, in all fairness, I should probably mention that they are generalists. So while they're also snatching up pest insects, they will snatch up any bug they can get like grasshoppers and crickets and mosquitoes and not just bugs, but that really big Chinese mantis that I mentioned, that great big one. It can also catch and eat lizards, frogs, and even small birds. And that just goes to show how powerful and strong these insects really are. Now, while we're on the topic of food, most of us have heard of Vespa, man 
Vespa mandarini, ma mandarinia, sorry. Um, its common name is the Asian giant hornet, but as the media has nicknamed them, it's the murder hornet. They have painful stings, though they're highly unlikely to attack humans. Um, like Nicole mentioned a little bit ago, they're only up in Washington. Their target prey is the honeybee, and they're about two inches long, making them the largest hornet in the world. And I bet you can't guess who's going to come in and save the day. That's right, praying mantises. So here's a quick little video that just came out of that. <laughs> laboratory setting but still that mantis just snatched up that hornet and started eating it and they usually go for the brains first some people like describe that as them going zombie um they not only eat those wasps but they also eat nicole's beetles and their lightning bugs and rachel's grasshoppers and emily's dragonflies and um alicia's wasps and all of alan's neuropteras so watch out praying mantises are coming for y'all okay so that's it. That's all I got for this bug. Is it going? Oh no! Hang on, let me try it again. I have a closing. I have a closing. Work, work. Okay. There. That's it for this bug. Ain't it great? And I yelled to the other, yo bug, smell you later. I looked at my yard. It was finally clear. The mantids are the best bugs that live out here. There you have it, folks. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Mantids are the best bugs. I was, I was vibing a little bit. That was, that was pretty good. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> mantids are bullies as Ooh. the comment section has told us. So that's, that's what I was getting from that, is that they're just murderers and don't distinguish and have no hearts. Especially they gotta eat too. Yeah, especially the non-native Chinese mantis. whoop de doo Wow, it's horrible for the environment. What a great bug. Oh! <laughs> oh! You know what? I think that this criticism applies to everybody's insects, though. I mean, Alicia really hasn't had a fair shot yet. So I'm I'm omitting her from this conversation so far, but sure. like grasshoppers are the only insect that we've talked about so far that I'm just going Rachel, around murdering things. What? You have had your turn. <laughs> I'm just. That's because trying. they're not they're not predators. They eat grass. Okay, they're murdering grass. I know that's the point. They're they're crops. crops. That's even worse. Lindsay. Um, that song was pretty good. Yeah, that that was really good. Thank you. It was. Too bad I messed it up at the end. <laughs> like that you animated the little mic drop, even though <laughs> I had a mic drop. That was the best part, honestly. A little overkill, but I'll give it to you. <laughs> Whatever. Jim, Jim Mason says, "Good job, Lindsay." Thank you, Jim. Um, Cassie says, "So fast, no fear." <laughs> Great presentation for a horrible insect. <laughs> <laughs> interesting uh, how they're, good they were at flying, though, because I don't think of them as being great flyers. But that's yeah, dude, they fly like thirty miles per hour. They fly fast, but they don't fly accurately. Let's be real. You know who's really good at flying? Dragonflies. <laughs> <laughs> but do they? Yeah. Hey, you've had your turn. <laughs> <laughs> all right should we, should we get, let alicia take us out here try try one more time to finish off my my see they were so awesome they just couldn't hog the stage for too long <laughs> outshine everybody else all right well if you guys want to i can try and try and send us off here please right. please do Okay, Let's see what we got. All right, let's see, where was I? Oh, yes, on the fact that they're pollinators, which is a good thing. But most importantly, it's the nest that they build. They build amazing nests because 
as we mentioned before, nobody builds a nest. Not the mantids, not the beetles, not the, I mean, they may dig a hole, but that's not building a, that's not building a house. So if you're building a house, this is what you want to do. So you can build it out of all kinds of things. They make their own paper mache, okay? They don't just cobble some pieces of wood together or anything like that. They make it. So they actually go and they get wood pulp and they make these houses. So they do it all with what little, their hands and their mouth and their little toesies and everything else. They're pretty awesome. They don't need tools. They can, they got this. So they can make all these really fancy ones. They can make them like pots out of mud. They can make tubes. They can make, they're just really, really cool. And they're doing it all for their young. It's not even for them. Most of the time, they're just, you know, too busy worrying about their next generation and they're young. So they're excellent parents. Really, really they are. Now, not only can they do all of this, they're gorgeous. So they come in all kinds of shapes and colors and sizes and they are wasps. So they have a waist. They have a little freaking waist. You don't get that with honeybees. You don't get that with, no, they, they are gorgeous. They have colors, all of these guys. So yeah, of course they sting, but you need to have some kind of defense in this world where it's bug eat bug world. So, you know, if somebody's getting a little too frisky with you, you need something to prevent yourself with. But it's more than that. They're using this to provide for their young. So honestly, wasps, wasps are pretty cool. They're pretty epic. They have iridescence, just like beetles. They can fly, just like dragonflies. They can take out your pests, just like Neuroptera. And they're being selective and they're not eating anybody's brains the way those mantids are. So really, they're kind of the way to go. So I rest my case and I hope that you guys do see how beautiful these guys are. And they're not out to get you. They are just doing what they do because wasps are the best insect. Interesting. Okay, okay, but really, that why are why are the nests minutes. so colorful? Yeah, why? Yeah, why? Okay, those nests actually that was a study done by a biologist and it was they were given opportunity to get to construction paper and dyed wood pulp and paper. And they actually do kind of use those colors in different patterns. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And you see that with the sand too, with uh, some of the, the pipe organ type, you can get them out of different materials. So they make them really pretty. So honestly, these nests don't have to be eyesores. They can be really, really pretty. Yeah, I love the little tiny potter wasps nests. They're so tiny and so cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like Cassie pointed those out to me the first time. Like those little tiny, like a little like um, round, like describe them. They look like pots. Yeah, just they're <laughs> like little tiny clay pots. <laughs> That's so cool. Some downstairs. Give me a sec. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> of course she has Maybe those. The bug nerds. So, so what was the rainbow wasp? Yeah, what's going on there? Is that real? She's oh, she like froze. <laughs> oh, I was really delighted. <laughs> well, I mean, I would assume so. Like, think about how many wasps are metallic, like bright, like blues and yeah, coppers pretty... and things like that. That's I so will cool. say, though, in regards to her point about them having waste, I don't think it's fair just because our other insects don't conform to conventional beauty standards that they should be judged for that. So, yes! uh, <laughs> points against the wasp. <laughs> uh, wasps have their own beauty standards. Neuropterans, grasshoppers, they don't. Uh, oh, yes. I've totally seen those. Yeah. Aww. Oh. They just like laid it or made them on one of my spider, like my spider plant that I had outside. <gasps> Two little nests. That is so fun. It looks like an AirPod. 
Do not put it in your ear. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you did put a wasp crawl in, like, Ooh. yeah, would you hear buzzing? No, no, no. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, you should turn on your TV and have like a big white screen. For Bryce. Welcome to... back. Did you hear us smack talking your wasps? <laughs> I, I did. I didn't. I just assumed there was none. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to acknowledge the really valid point that Joyce Noland made, which was that don't mantids eat each other's heads? Yes. They, in fact, they will eat each other's entire bodies. So that's a really good point, Joyce. Thanks for bringing that up. That's pretty gross. Mm-hmm. Not very it's pretty awesome. Because they can also help control their own populations. <laughs> no. Just saying. All of, most of the studies and examples that we see of wasps, or not wasps, uh, praying mantises eating their mates were actually in laboratory settings. So they were stressed out. So we, there's actually a lot of evidence to, to suggest that that's not normal behavior. Why is everybody being mean to mantises right now? I mean, I'm <laughs> stuck for them. I mean, I'm dissing on you because you didn't know your own bug, but. <laughs> you know, Rachel said that, by the way. Everything that I've read said that only about 25% of the females post mating will eat their mates. So only about 25%. Mm-hmm. Those are not good odds. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it time for people to vote? I think yeah. so. I think so. All right, viewers, cast your votes in the comments. Who is going to win? Grasshoppers? Beetles? Dragonflies? Wasps? Neuropteras? Or the best, mantids? Oh, that's biased. That wow. Biased. Shameless self-plug. Can we all get like one sentence to plead our case while people are deciding and no. your answers? Why not? Because everyone has vote. had their five, vote six for the to say. Original cowboy of the plains. The grasshopper. I can't mute How her. is that a selling point? <laughs> yeah, the cowboy. <laughs> I'm just like simplifying my explanation. They they are percussionists. They listen for rhythms to determine species. It's pretty stinking cool. You mean they can't just look and tell it's another species? <laughs> Not at a distance. Have you been on the prairie, <laughs> Alicia? It's huge. Yeah, I know. My wasps, they fly all over it. They can see everything. Okay. Ooh. Oh, here's my plug. Okay. Those dragonfly larvae with the, the butt breathing, you know, which is really weird and cool. That is the inspiration for prosthetic heart valves that they're hoping will mimic natural blood flow better. Just what? saying. What? Yeah. What? Dead serious. I gotta write that down. Yeah. Lindsay, I'll you send you an article. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Scientists are actually starting to use mushroom mycelium to do that instead of but other animal parts. It's something that they're, it's in the works. It's like the way that their rectum works, apparently. It has three little flappies on it, kind of like our oh, heart, heart like valves. Oh, like the heart do. valve. Yeah. That's a pretty good fact. Okay. Yeah. Right. Are you guys looking at the voting? This is so cute. We have a lot of votes going everywhere. We do. Thank you. We tally them up. Thank, thank you for the firefly love. You know, those beautiful insects that get so many people yes. interested in insects in general. They have amazing communication that doesn't need drumming. They just, you know, flash each other with pretty lights and make cute dances. <laughs> and that's all they need. They do flash each other. Yeah. I'm going to try to like tally Good these up. Good. Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> Oh, I think everybody has at least one vote, which is kind of surprising. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> because all insects at the end game are amazing. So it's, they deserve Wait, love. nobody voted for the, for the wasps. <gasps> wasps. Wasps are That's hard. because people are biased and I'm very sad. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're right. That isn't fair because <laughs> the wasps were pretty amazing and people were commenting on that. No, oh, my my mom, who is a percussionist, commented to somebody and said, "Nobody doesn't need drumming." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Richard is on Team Neuroptera. All right. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> Thank you, Cassie, for the Firefly vote. Nice, nice. Honestly, you know, I really feel like the the presentation style points for that Fresh Prince of Bel Air rap really, really were something that should be taken into consideration. Uh, that was super extra. Yeah. I so, mean, <laughs> at least three of the votes said that's exactly why they voted for you. So. <laughs> I think it is being considered. Style <laughs> substance. Oh, oh, okay. So my, my plea for the wasps, I guess, got us some more wasp votes. I should have pointed out that Amanda <laughs> said that she voted for all of them because they were all awesome. So I guess that counted as a wasp. Everybody gets a vote. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Really, all y'all did so good. Man, so, thanks, yeah. Melissa. No rock. <laughs> this is fun. If you guys have enjoyed this, you guys, as in not like my coworkers, but like the audience <laughs> members watching us on Facebook, um, let us know because this was really fun for us too. And mm -hmm. uh, it'd be really easy for us to put something like this together again for next week or something. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, so easy, especially yes. for. Oh, we haven't announced next week's uh, topic yet. Yeah. Do we Should have we a theme for I mean, Alan's. Which oh, like yeah. Lindsay's and. We got to, yeah, we got to figure out something to fight about, though. I can think of something. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole is here for the uh, fighting. <laughs> a friendly competition. <laughs> I like the competition. Mm -hmm. It makes All it right. fun. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> do we have a uh, do we have a winner, Lindsay? Have you, are you tallying? I am trying to. Comments keep coming in. <laughs> and there's there's the delay too. So yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we do have at least one vote for let's do it again. It was very fun and highly entertaining. So Yay. good deal. That's awesome. And that person's got a like. Thanks, Ben, for letting us know. Because, I mean, yeah, it's fun for us, too. <laughs> it really is. Spider Smackdown is what Jim wants. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that will, would be so fun. I won't be present for that. Sorry. <laughs> we'll replace you with Cassie. That's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. Please do. <laughs> Honestly, it might be kind of funny to have, like, an anti-spider presentation in a Spider Smackdown. I feel like that would get some votes. <laughs> probably i i can be we'll that probably person. get the most votes unfortunately <laughs> it'll just be hard for me to look at a bunch of pictures of spiders for a long period of time oh <laughs> <laughs> i like jumping spiders jumping spiders are nice they're so good they're really cute but everything else nah pass <laughs> yes. a bunch of people are saying that we need to do it again i think they finally oh man do i state bird Joyce Nolan voted for Dragonfly and said nothing was said about mantid larvae. I literally deleted a whole slide about juvenile mantids because I, I, it put me too far over the time limit. <laughs> <laughs> what can if I we, say? If we get points for staying inside the time limit. I think like only two people did. Like I me. did. Yeah. You did too, Emily? Okay, okay. Yeah. Like within five minutes or within the six minutes? Within five. I within six. It was within five. Yeah. I forgot to stop my timer. <laughs> and really, Rachel, yours was like seven because you just kept talking afterwards. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we were allowed to have discussions afterwards. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> but do we have a a preliminary vote at least yes i'm hang on i just put tallies i gotta add them up real quick oh my gosh. Wait, it's four it's easier than having <laughs> to delete numbers yeah okay but um oh you know what um cassie just commented that baby mantids are cute as heck oh, and that reminded sweet. me that we have had like a baby black widow episode but like <gasps> with mantids in our building before yeah, yeah. Oh, Emily's having- But also flashbacks. Black Widows, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready? Yep. Yes, we're ready. Yeah, okay. I have the preliminary votes. In last place, <laughs> we have the wasps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, let me make sure that we're still online because something just happened on my feed. Okay. It's done for me. It says we're live. Oh, we're okay, good. Something okay. just happened. Sorry, go ahead. 
All right, and second to last place, there is a tie between <laughs> the grasshoppers and the beetles. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> in third place, we have Alan's Neuropteros. I'll take it, bronze medal. Good. In second place are the Mantids. I'll take a silver. And in first place are Emily's Dragonflies. Yay! <laughs> Ah, thank you, thank you. Amazing. I, yay, dragonflies! <laughs> this was for you. Dragonflies are good. Dragonflies are good. They're really dragonflies cool. are awesome. Thanks. Guys, that was so fun. That was that so was. fun. And like long as we put asterisk by Lindsay's because hers was like 80% the rap. 80%. <laughs> <laughs> But people I voted for it. that. <laughs> oh, uh, gotta, and like, we can't know. be mad about Emily winning because like dragonflies are so cool. Like honestly, you couldn't so be cool. mad about anybody winning. Yeah. No. If anybody had won, everybody still wins. Yeah. Cause bugs. Yes. Cause bugs. <laughs> anyway, all bugs are awesome. It's true. Mm -hmm. True. So may the bugs more be awesome with you. Yes, may others. the bugs be with yes. you. Yes. And also with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. Um, Thank since you guys. like 10 million of you said do it again, we'll do it again. So, yeah. I like Definitely. it. Awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.